We'll now transition to a more general discussion of how physical cameras work so that we can relate the theory back to computer graphics and gain a proper understanding of virtual cameras. We'll start by quickly discussing field of view. So a camera's field of view is the descriptor of what part of the observed scene will be in the final frame. So we can think of the field of view as defined by boundaries extending outward from the camera's position and expanding in the area that they enclose the farther away from the camera that we get. Right, so we could, uh, we, we could treat this lens here, just, just for the sake of example, let's treat this as uh, the, the position of the camera, and we can think of the field of view as expanding the farther away we get from the camera. Now let's quickly relate this back to the view volume's frustum shape that we discovered back while discussing perspective projection and understand that the unique shape of the frustum is directly related to the fact that this field of view expands the farther we get from the camera, right? So just to quickly redraw this the way we were, we were looking at this back when discussing perspective projection, we were talking about this, this sort of truncated pyramid shape. Now, of course, we are only describing this from the side view However, we can still see the general idea here, right? These, these lines are not parallel as they extend uh, farther and farther away from the camera, and they give us the, uh, basically the boundaries of the field of view. The field of view is defined as the angle between a set of view volume boundaries. So, so in this case, we can think of the vertical uh, field of view as uh, this this angle between the you know the the top boundary of this view volume and the bottom boundary right we are we are looking at this from the side right so so we could we could measure this angle right here we could also measure the field of view between the two horizontal boundaries as well now field of view is also closely related to another camera property called the focal length so let's bring that in here let's Let's bring in the focal length, which we'll see is the distance from the optical center of the lens or group of lenses, depending on what kind of camera we're working with here. The distance between this optical center, let's just put it in here, uh, and the, the image plane, which is going to be right back here. So this distance is the focal length. And in a physical camera here, the image plane that we are concerned with is actually going to be the physical sensor that is, is capturing the image or the film back in a film camera. Now this measurement of, of this focal length here uh, is, is defined when the camera is focused at infinity. And we'll talk a bit more about focus uh, in a little bit. Now we won't focus on the physics of optics here, no pun intended, but you can imagine the optical center of a lens to uh, be uh, right in the center of it, or if we're dealing with a group of lenses, because of course in reality most cameras uh, have many lenses at play in, in uh, bending light and, and getting it to behave correctly as it enters the camera. And so if we're dealing with a group of lenses here, we can, we can think of the optical center as being approximately in the center of uh, whatever group of lenses we might be working with. Now, field of view and focal length are inversely proportional, so we'll find that shorter focal lengths give a wider field of view, and vice versa. Uh, we can take a look at this formula, which governs the relationship between focal length and uh, the field of view. All right, so in this formula here, we're using uh, phi to represent the field of view, uh, we have an F in the formula here, which is going to be uh, for the focal length, as well as a new measurement that we haven't discussed yet. It'll be represented by A here, and that will be the size of sensor or, or the, the image plane that we are projecting onto. So just taking a look at uh, the different results that this equation gives us, if we were to use a sensor size of and this will be 24 millimeters vertically, so we have to consider the vertical and horizontal dimensions separately. So we'll just use the vertical dimensions of the sensor uh, to calculate these results here. 
and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try out some different focal lengths plugging in those values to this equation and see what field of view we obtain. And so we can clearly see here that uh, you know, by, by physically moving that optical center closer to the image plane and uh, using a fairly small focal length, such as maybe 18 millimeters, it's a fairly standard uh, wide angle focal length on a lens. If you've ever done some photography, um, we can see that we end up with a, actually a fairly uh, wide field of view here of 67.4 degrees. And we are visualizing this field of view, again, just by drawing these lines, really showing the maximum amount of information in the form of light rays coming from the scene that will enter the camera and uh, uh, make its way to the image plane, all right? So 67.4 degrees, that's, uh, that's the field of view we can obtain with a sensor 24 millimeters tall and a focal length of 18 millimeters. Let's look on the other hand at, uh, again, the same sensor size, however, a longer focal length. And we'll see this inversely proportional relationship here between the focal length and the field of view. We can see that as that focal length gets longer, so here we're using a 55 millimeter focal length, again, another very common, um, a, a common focal length used in photography. We can see that the resulting field of view is significantly smaller. All right, so, and, and again, just tracing out these lines, corresponding to the, you know, the maximum amount of information coming from the scene that we'll actually be able to capture here, you know, after those light rays enter the lens and uh, make their way back onto the image plane, we can see that that resulting field of view is quite a bit uh, more narrow. Now, another thing we can see in this diagram is that the size of the sensor is also directly responsible for dictating you know, how much of that incoming light will be captured and, and, and thus what that final field of view will actually be. You know, let's visualize some changes to this sensor size, this variable A in the formula. All right, so just for a quick example here, let's imagine uh, that the sensor was actually a lot a lot uh, smaller here. So I'll just, I'll just remove the old sensor we were working with here. I'm gonna have to go and select that layer and just remove this old sensor we were working with here. And let's pretend we're working with a significantly smaller sensor. So this, uh, well, maybe, maybe we're down around, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's around 15 millimeters tall now. Again, this is the vertical dimension of the sensor. Well, now we can see that the, the field of view that we can actually capture for the same focal length is actually quite a bit smaller. So let's, uh, let's try draw out those, uh, those lines again, just to visualize what's happening here. Again, just coming from the top and bottom of the sensor, tracing those lines as they converge at the optical center and uh, head on out into the scene, we can see that, well, this resulting angle here is uh, quite a bit smaller than what we would have obtained for this focal length with a larger sensor. Let's compare some different focal lengths here, just using some cameras inside of Maya to see just the differences in, in how the perspective distortion appears uh, when, uh, when using different focal lengths. So I have uh, one camera here set up uh, with a focal length of 18 millimeters. Let's uh, go right ahead and switch our view so that it is, uh, is looking through that camera. All right, so here is what the scene is gonna look like from a, uh, a focal length of 18 millimeters. We can see that objects uh, shrink quite quickly with distance, uh, right? So objects up close are fairly large in the frame and the rest of the objects are pretty small in the frame. In contrast to uh, my second camera here, which, uh, well, let's, let's just go ahead and select camera two here. 
and we can see that this camera is set up with a focal length of 55 millimeters. And so let's uh, take a look at the scene from this camera's point of view. And what well, we can see that objects don't shrink nearly as quickly uh, with distance. Uh, you know, if we we move this camera such that, you know, this this first cube is roughly the same size in the frame as it was when uh, when viewed with the other camera, we can see that well the, the other objects here, um, they, they haven't uh, shrunk nearly as quickly with distance. Uh, it almost appears as if the entire scene is, is kind of being compressed, if you will, such that it appears like the background elements are closer to the camera, even when in reality they aren't, right? So, so lenses with a really long focal length, you'll hear them described as compressing the scene together, uh, if, if that makes sense, right? Kind of compressing the foreground and background together, uh, creating a really tight shot. That's another description that's used for longer focal lengths. They create really tight framing as opposed to the wide angle lens, right? The, the, the 18 millimeter I have here, which uh, is, is again, is a really wide framing. It, it lets in a lot of information uh, and allows us to view a lot more of the scene that we're, we're looking at. So let's relate this to our understanding of perspective projection. We know that in computer graphics, we don't have a physical image plane placed behind the optical center of the camera, which is, well, we could consider that to be uh, the camera's position itself, basically where these lines that we've been drawing, where they converge as they move towards the camera. Uh, however, we are still very interested in the camera's field of view as well. That's going to tell us what part of the scene we can actually see. And this is represented, of course, by an angle. So in computer graphics, we can consider the focal length to be the distance to the near plane, actually, right? Remember, we, because of course we're not dealing with a physical camera, we, uh, we just consider the near plane of the view volume to be the image plane that we're you know, projecting the scene onto. And therefore, well, it'll be the same distance, right? It doesn't matter if the image plane is in front or behind the optical center, or in this case, the, the position of the camera itself, uh, we can use the distance to the near plane. We can use that distance as the focal length of our camera. So to do this, we're gonna need the ratio of the focal length to sensor size to have the focal length expressed in terms of the sensor size. So just doing a little bit of algebra here, we are rearranging this formula that we were just working with into this form right here, where we have, uh, so in this case, the cotangent of uh, the field of view divided by two being equal to two times the focal length over the size of the sensor. So now recalling here the virtual equivalence to uh, these measurements as they would be used in a physical camera. Well, we know that the focal length, uh, that is just the distance to the near plane in our virtual camera. And well, I mean, we can clearly see that um, the, the, um, th this, this sensor size, we can just replace that with, um, uh, let's say the height of the image plane that we are projecting onto. So here we have uh, 2n, over h, which will give us, uh, well, the, the cotangent of that field of view divided by two. And we can recall back to when we were talking about the perspective projection matrix, that both the x and y scaling factors involve a multiplication uh, by the distance to the near plane, right? There it is, as well as a division by the, uh, well, well in, in this case, it's the height of the image plane for the y uh, scaling factor, and it's a it's a division by the width of the image plane for the x scaling factor. Uh, we'll deal with that in just a second here. But let's just realize, uh, of course, if I, if I use a capital H here just to uh, make it clear that this is the same height measurement that we are using. Well, there there we go. We can we can directly use this formula involving the field of view to calculate 
this scaling factor for the y coordinates. All right, so that's why we've rearranged this equation so that we can, uh, we can, we can get a formula which uses the field of view. And we can have that calculate the same thing uh, that we've already been calculating in the perspective projection matrix. All right, now let's do one other thing here because it would be really nice to, uh, to, to not have to also bring in this uh, horizontal dimension for the image plane. It'd be really great if we could just um, uh, you know, calculate this in terms of the height of the image plane um, and, and use something else. Uh, we're we're going to use a ratio of the width to height to, to help us out here. So let's again just do uh, s some more work here on this this formula right so we can say that uh, 2n over uh, w right so this this will be the scaling factor for x we can say that 2n over w is equal to 2n over uh, h and again i will use this capital h just to keep the variables consistent here uh, 2n over h but also introducing another variable r which is going to allow us to introduce the aspect ratio of the width to the height of the image plane all right so this one over r this is the aspect ratio of the image all right so finally we can uh, let, let's let's jump right into this perspective projection matrix here and insert our new formulae which allow us to get those scaling factors for x and y let's we'll start with with y just because that is that is the first one we did um, we'll, we'll be we'll be using the cotangent of the field of view divided by two uh, that will get us that that uh, original ratio that we were originally using uh, to calculate the y scaling factor and then we'll use the exact same formula except also multiplying by the aspect ratio of width to height such that um, again just just by using only the vertical field of view here uh, we can also get the horizontal field of view without introducing any other any other variables here so that'll be a 1 over r uh, and then multiplied by cotangent of the field of view over 2 all right so there we have it and 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 we'll we'll see uh, this uh, perspective projection matrix used whenever we want to use the field of view to calculate it